sugar, fructose, mitochondria. Alcohol breaks down in the liver, and the liver has a limited capacity to process a certain amount of alcohol at once, leading to alcoholism being a fatal disease due to alcohol's toxic effects on the body. Alcohol and sugar undergo similar breakdown processes in the liver. Excessive sugar intake prompts the liver to convert sugar into fat cells through de novo lipogenesis, process of creating new fat, driven by three enzymes, ATP citrate lyase, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, and fatty acid synthase. Fructose, not detectable in blood sugar tests, is transformed into acetyl-CoA glycolysis through this process. To put simply, excessive sugar overwhelms the liver, causing it to generate fat as a self-protective mechanism, leading to fatty liver. An intake of 25 grams of sugar daily is deemed excessive. A fatty liver gives rise to insulin resistance and paves the way for various diseases, with the liver struggling to manage its essential functions. Sugar and fructose are consistently interconnected. Even consuming solely wheat, which primarily contains glucan, leads to its organization into amylase or amylopectin structures resembling branches. The many branches of amylopectin make it difficult to break down. This causes insulin levels to spike fast. Glucose triggers rapid insulin spikes, whereas fructose induces slow ones. Dietary fiber also moderates insulin surges by inhibiting amylase and pectin activities. However, the primary harm resides in the liver, which isn't apparent through standard blood tests. Interestingly, glucose improves mitochondrial function by activating two enzymes. 1. AMP kinase adenosine monophosphate kinase the fuel gauge signaling cells to produce more mitochondria in response to declining ATP levels. When ATP decreases, indicating low energy, AMP binds to the enzyme's active site, boosting biosynthesis. 2. HADH hydroxyacyl CoA dehydrogenase, aiding in breaking down fatty acids into oxygen consumable to carbon fragments. Mitochondria act as cellular powerhouses, akin to coal-based power stations generating electricity. Like coal's conversion, mitochondria transform sugar and fats into ATP energy for cellular activities. ATP powers muscle contractions, brain functions, liver detoxification, heartbeats, and more. Our reliance on mitochondria's ATP production is pivotal. Mitochondria imitate nuclear power stations, remarkably efficient yet posing significant environmental risk in malfunctions. Similar to radioactive waste, mitochondria's oxidative phosphorylation process, producing insufficient ATP, generates free radicals causing cellular damage. While nuclear waste disposal is challenging, the body boasts mechanisms to neutralize free radicals via antioxidants. Damaged mitochondria contribute to numerous diseases. Contrary to its reputation as cellular energy, sugar can poison mitochondria. Fructose, absent from blood tests, undergoes conversion by binding to three enzymes crucial for mitochondria function and ATP production. The first enzyme, AMP kinase, engages in fructose metabolism, forming a covalent bond that obstructs enzyme exit, leading to mitochondrial impairment and damage. Acyl-CoA dehydrogenases constitute the second enzyme, essential for introducing fatty acids into cells for energy production alongside glutamate. The third enzyme, CPT1 creatine palmitol transferase 1, aids fatty acid transport into cells, requiring oxygen for metabolism. Furthermore, fructose elevates uric acid levels, inhibiting essential enzymes, notably the enzyme responsible for creatine renewal. Uric acid's elevation, driven by fructose, disrupts fatty acid transportation essential for mitochondria functioning. Consuming sugar suppresses ATP production in mitochondria, damaging overall health. Fructose compounds this harm, obliterating mitochondrial function. This impact is akin to placing a time bomb in the body, temporarily relishing its effects while enduring long-term disease repercussions after years. A short introduction of fats in our diet. Diverse types of dietary fats exist. 1. 
Omega-3 sourced from deep sea algae via fish consumption. 2. Olive oil, a rich source of monounsaturated oleic acid, activating liver receptors for better functionality. 3. Polyunsaturated fats, like in sesame and soy, anti-inflammatory but potentially immune harming when excessively heated. 4. Saturated fats from animals, contrary to common belief, exhibit differing effects based on source, with cheese fat even being anti-inflammatory. 5. Medium-chain fatty acids, such as in coconut, suitable for moderate heat cooking. 6. Omega-6 oils, inflammatory in nature and distinct from GLA or omega-6 LA to ALA ratios. 7. Trans fats, highly problematic, difficult for the body to break down and toxic, contributing to fatty liver. Three fat types coexist in the body, each with distinct implications, notably regular fat, visceral fat from stress-induced cortisol, and liver fat as the most detrimental form. The liver can become overloaded with regular fat, leading to cell death, cytokine release, and insulin resistance when surpassed by 22 pounds. Visceral fat from stress will do the same if surpassed by 6 pounds. And the worst of them, the fat in the liver, when half a pound is already too much, a person will never see that on his morning scale. Visceral fat, rooted in cortisol linked to stress, can accumulate despite thin external appearance, posing risks. Liver fat, the most harmful form, leads to insulin resistance, diabetes, and other issues even with minimal accumulation. It's essential to differentiate these fats, considering their types rather than mere weight, as even those seemingly thin externally, might harbor sugar-induced liver fat and subsequently fall ill like those with visible excess weight. The term TOFI reflects this phenomenon, thin from the outside, fat from the inside. LSTLY, why does diet soda fall short? Investigating this, we find that its artificial sweetness tricks the brain into expecting sugar. Consequently, the pancreas releases insulin, anticipating sugar intake. However, since there's no actual sugar, the body seeks calories to process, potentially leading to overeating. Moreover, artificial sweeteners, especially sucralose, can alter gut bacteria for the worse. Furthermore, these sweeteners interact with adipocytes, fat cells, leading to fat deposits unrelated to insulin. In the end, artificial sweeteners deceive the taste buds but not the body. A significant portion of the immune system is concentrated in the stomach. The domination of harmful bacteria leads to detrimental effects, including suppressed serotonin production, a crucial factor in depression. These bacteria feed on the intestines and can cause leaky gut, releasing toxins into the bloodstream, fostering inflammation and disease. The bacteria's food source is fiber, not present in processed foods. Fiber types play a role here as well. Soluble and insoluble fibers exist, forming a network that influences health. Soluble fibers like inulin or pectin create a gel-like structure while insoluble fibers like cellulose resemble fibrous materials. Together, they form a comprehensive layer, fostering a net-like structure that supports healthy gut lining barrier. This network's destruction via processing underscores the significance of consuming complete, unprocessed foods that maintain this fiber network. Adding single-type dietary fiber supplements can be counterproductive. Whole wheat kernels, for instance, reach the intestines intact, where bacteria consume the outer peel and starchy parts, safeguarding the liver by minimizing breakdown within it. The intricate connection between the stomach and brain is significant. So, it is worth remembering, protect the liver, and feed your gut. The information in this video is for educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional medical advice. If you have any questions or concerns about your health, Please consult a healthcare professional before making any healthcare decisions.